Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Patshala's video series. Uh, in this video, we would be discussing about what suspend option is in GCP. This was asked by one of uh, our viewers and uh, uh, I'm just trying to make this video as a response to that uh, comment. So before we begin, let's try to create a VM instance and uh, the uh, how we could actually suspend the VM instance uh, going forward. Before we create the VM, uh, let's look at what the details are for the uh, for the suspension of a VM. Now, uh, if you want, if you want to keep the VM instance around but do not want to be charged for it, right? There's always an option to stop and start the instance. But then uh, occasionally what happens is uh, when we stop or uh, start the VM, right? So if by any chance the application is big, it might take few minutes to get the entire application up and running when the VM starts. Now, generally this is what many developers or uh, people who frequently uh, try to save costs would like to avoid um, given that uh, if the VM takes uh, around 20 minutes to boot up the entire application, so that's a no-no for them. Now, in those situations, uh, you can use the option called a suspend the VM. So, when we suspend the VM, Google preserves the virtual machine in your project and moves the content of the virtual machine's memory to storage. While the VM is suspended, Google only charges for the storage used to preserve the virtual machine's memory wherein we would save cost on all other computing that happens so since the virtual machine is typically in a stop state with the information or the data that was available on the virtual memory saved on a storage layer so that is how we would save cost on the compute part though we would still be charged for the amount of memory that is saved on the storage part so that is something that we cannot still avoid. While the VM is suspended, Google only charges for the storage used to preserve the VM's memory. Attributes like the static IP remain in place so that the network function works as expected when we resume the VM. After resuming, Google moves the uh, virtual machine's memory from the storage back to the instance and starts charging for us for the VM that is currently in the running state. Suspending a instance is ideal for a development and test environments that are not being fully utilized during the off period such as during evenings or weekends for cost savings and faster initialization than creating a new virtual instance. Yes, uh, we can also stop and start the instance. That's also something uh, an option that is available. But if we see if the initialization time for a VM is very huge uh, in in terms of minutes, uh, then uh, stopping and starting a VM is not always a very good task to go on with. Applications that require a long period of initialization after the instance has finished booting, but before the application is ready to service for the first request. Such a virtual development workstation or complex Java applications is what people would like to use uh, when they have to suspend a VM. Now, how does the suspend work? Uh, suspending a instance sends an ACPI S3 suspend signal. Uh, that's basically an API call to the instance operating system. Now, obviously, suspending a VM basically differs from stopping a VM because uh, when we stop a VM, the data that is there on the virtual machine's uh, memory is not stored anywhere in the disk. Suspended instances preserve the guest OS memory, device state and the application state whereas uh, when you stop nothing is preserved. Uh, you can only suspend an instance for up to 60 days that's a hard limit that Google has set so uh, instance can remain in the sh suspended state for a maximum of 60 days. After the 60 days, the instance is automatically moved to the terminated state. That means we would be getting, uh, we would be losing both the storage as well as the um, memory that was saved, saved on the storage. So in 
after 60 days if the vm still remains in a suspended state then google itself would be automatically terminating the instance with the exception of local ssd data all the resources that are attached to the instances remain attached to the instance and will be charged including the persistent disk and static or reserved external IPs that are attached to the VM when it was being created. Now all these resources are charged according to the price sheet even if an instance is suspended. That is uh, the persistent disk and all the other uh, stuff which is attached to the VM so these would still be charged because they are consuming resources on the Google Cloud platforms so we would be getting all the details all the pricing from there now uh, we cannot suspend an instance by using the standard process that are built in into the guest environments commands uh, such as system CTL suspend uh, so that's available in the Ubuntu 16.04 environment or later is not available so you can only use the Google Cloud CLI or the console that is the API engine uh, for compute engine to suspend an instance. If you don't care about restoring an instance's memory and device state when you resume the instance, you can literally go ahead and stop the instance, uh, instance instead. What does uh, which does not incur any storage charges which are generally put when the memory is saved. Now there is some limitations that we should be actually looking at. So there are these are the following limitations. You cannot suspend an instance that uses a GPU. We can also not suspend an instance that is attached to a local SSD, but the local SSD contents must be discarded using special flags for discarding local SSD data. Obviously we can't suspend an instance by using the standard process that is built into the guest system, uh, something like system CTL suspend, which we have already discussed at the top. Uh, the other important thing is uh, we can only suspend a VM for a maximum of 60 days uh, if a VM goes to the stop state uh, we cannot uh, so what a Google would automatically do is terminate the instance after 60 days uh, we cannot suspend instances that are more than 120 GB in memory so typically there would be people who would think that we could maybe suspend a database instance or MySQL database or something which is ideally not the case, uh, definitely not the best practice to be followed. Also, uh, Google Cloud Platform has an upper limit of 120 GB of memory that, so any instance which is having more memory can definitely not be stored. Now we can suspend uh, preemptible instances, but the preemptible instance must, might be terminated before it is successfully suspended. And a preemptible instances are nothing but the spot instances that we get in AWS. So uh, there is always an option, or always a possibility that uh, GCP would just terminate the instance before even we get to the suspend state. Now uh, we can also not suspend an E2 instance, and we can also not suspend a confidential VM. So these are the things, and the last option is uh, you cannot suspend a VM that has CSEK protected disk attached to the space. Now this is what uh, we have right and uh, obviously there is some compatibility that also goes with the suspension of the VMs but almost all operating platforms uh, the major operating platforms uh, systems like Ubuntu, CentOS, uh, Windows uh, all of these already have the built-in feature of uh, having a suspend option. Now uh, let's try to create a VM instance with an E2 size. I'll just keep all, everything as defaults and we'll try to see if we can suspend this VM. Now for obvious reasons uh, that we have already seen in the limitations, uh, we cannot suspend a VM instance that is of the type E. So we would wait for that. In the meantime, I would also create a new EC2 uh, new instance. This time, I'll not select the E series, but I'll probably select the N power series. And what we also have to make sure that there is no GPU attached to it. So this is also there. I will also create this VM instance right over there. Now, uh, if we uh, if we look, uh, the first instance is already up and running. So what we can do is uh, suspend but if you see that this option is already 
grayed out this is because uh, the instance one that we created was actually the type e2 which means that gcp would not allow us to suspend the vm let's try to see if we get the option to suspend the vm that we created in instance 2 so i would uh, carefully select instance 2 and would try to click on suspend and as you see uh, when i do this so this basically asks me if it is okay for the vm to be preserved and once i click suspend uh, so i can definitely uh, see that the instant state of the VM goes into a suspended state as soon as the process finishes. Now that I don't need the instance one, I'll very politely go ahead and delete the VM instance and I'll also delete the boot disk that is attached to this. Quickly refreshing the page so that we only have one EC2 or one VM instance available on our console. If you see, this is how a suspended VM looks like. So there is an orange icon with a pause symbol over there. Now, uh, what are the other options that we have? So what I could definitely do is resume a suspended instance. So it is same as starting an instance. So I could either do a start or a resume for this instance. Else, what I could also do is delete the VM instance. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly start the VM instance to see if the VM instance comes into the running state now once the vm instance comes into the running state uh, what we can also try to do is suspend the vm and then try to delete the vm and see and let's also see if this asks us for deleting the additional memory that is saved somewhere else so our vm is already in the running state i'll quickly click on suspend uh, which should initiate the api call to suspend the VM so as you see the VM is already suspended uh, now let's try to delete the VM instance and uh, here is something that we I should be really careful about uh, it's also us are we sure if you want to delete that yes uh, and it also says that we should delete the boot disk obviously no mention of uh, anything being deleted from the memory that is stored in the storage but that should also not be a concern for us whereas uh, we should be able to delete the VM instance successfully so this was a short video describing what suspend is on Google cloud platforms uh, especially in the compute engine section and uh, I would also attach the documentation link that we just went through in the initial part of the video so that you could have a fair understanding of what exactly is happening on the suspend option. Thank you so much for watching uh, the video guys. If you like the video, please like and share it with others. Uh, if you're new to the channel and would like to see more interesting stuff like this, uh, Please subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.